In the budget announcements made on February 1st, Indian Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman reiterated a goal that had been articulated earlier for nuclear energy capacity to reach 100 gigawatts by 2047. Where are we now as a country? At 8 gigawatts that we've achieved over a period of 15 years worth of efforts. Now, does this make the 2047 goal look a wee bit ambitious? Let's take a look. Hello and welcome back to Business Matters at the Hindu with me, K. Bharat Kumar. Much of what we will see in this episode stems from conversations that I've had with a friend and colleague M. Ramesh of Business Line and from his recent article, so due credit to him. Nuclear power held out great hope for India's energy aspirations when in 2008, India signed a nuclear deal with the US under the leadership of then Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. A couple of years later, in a speech at a nuclear summit with the US, Dr. Singh laid out the target for India, saying thus, in India, we have ambitious plans for using nuclear energy to meet our growing energy needs. Our target is to increase our installed capacity by more than sevenfold to 35,000 megawatt electricity by the year 2022 and to 60,000 by 2032. Our current capacity is 8,180 megawatts, which is one-fourth the intended capacity. And of these, 2,000 megawatts worth was built with the help of the Russians. Subsequent governments have tweaked the target since then. The first revision told us that we now intended to reach a capacity of 63,000 megawatts by 2032, as mentioned by Minister Jitendra Singh in 2016 in reply to a Rajya Sabha question. The target was then revised downwards to 22,480 megawatts by 2031-32. This was again in response to a question in the Rajya Sabha in August 2024. Alongside, the government has begun speaking of 100,000 megawatts by 2047, as a target. It's not clear why we've not been able to reach whatever target we've set for ourselves as a country. Be that as it may, let's look at two aspects, the practical application of science and then the investments that are involved or required. First off, you may all know that thorium could well serve as a second largest energy source after coal. Thorium is cleaner than coal, so it is a key material that could help us achieve our net zero emissions goal by 2070. To run nuclear reactors, we need uranium. India does not have access to a whole lot of uranium except through deals that we've signed, like with the US. Because India has historically been uranium starved, Dr. Homi Baba, who was the architect of India's nuclear energy sector, had drawn up a three-stage program to help generate nuclear energy for domestic electricity purposes. In the first stage, India would use natural uranium in pressurized heavy water reactors. But here's the challenge. Natural uranium contains only 0.7% of uranium-235, the key material. The rest converts into plutonium-239. In the second stage, plutonium-239 is mixed with uranium-238 to fuel fast breeder reactors. Here again, uranium-238 transmutes into more plutonium-239. With adequate plutonium-239 in hand, we enter the third stage, where thorium, used alongside plutonium, is converted into yet another nuclear fuel, uranium-233. And then, India could be in business. Work on the 500 megawatt prototype fast breeder reactor commenced in 2004, but is yet to be completed. In March last year, Prime Minister Narendra Modi was witness to the commencement of core loading, which a government press release indicated as a historic milestone. Close to a year later, India does not have even one fast breeder reactor. This is required for the second cycle. So obviously, we are very far away from the third cycle, which involves thorium. And remember again, India is blessed with an abundance of thorium. There is another path to the thorium cycle called the Accelerator Driven Subcritical System or the ADSS. I won't get into the science behind it, but there too, India has made no meaningful progress. The other area that we need to watch is how much we are investing in nuclear energy in terms of capital expenditure. Last July, Minister Singh told the Lok Sabha in response to a question that the total capital expenditure on nuclear power projects under construction during the last five years, ended 2023-24, was about 66,503 crore. But in August, in response to a question in the Rajya Sabha, he said that the capital expenditure for nuclear power generation in the same five years was about 69,435 crore. Even though he used the word about when he talked about figures in both these instances, the difference is a substantial 2,932 crore. Net-net, in the about 16 years since we signed the nuclear deal with the US, we reached a capacity of 8 gigawatts of nuclear energy. Now, in the remaining time we have till 2032, 
we want to reach capacity of 22 gigawatts. Given our track record, that itself seems like a tall order. And then from then on, 15 years to 2047, we want to grow fivefold and reach a capacity of 100 gigawatts. What do you think? Can India do this? We'd love to hear from you in the comment section. That brings us to our Did You Know section that we have for you every week. Did you know that early in 1942, a group of scientists led by Enrico Fermi gathered at the University of Chicago to develop their theories on nuclear fission? By November 1942, they were ready for construction to begin on the world's first nuclear reactor, which came to be known as Chicago Pile 1. This was erected on the floor of a squash court beneath the university's athletic stadium. In addition to uranium and graphite, it contained control rods made of cadmium. Cadmium is a metallic element that absorbs neutrons. When the rods were in the pile, there were fewer neutrons to fission uranium atoms. This slowed the chain reaction. When the rods were pulled out, more neutrons were available to split atoms. The chain reaction sped up. On the morning of December 2nd, 1942, the scientists were ready to begin a demonstration. Fermi ordered the control rods to be withdrawn a few inches at a time during the next several hours. Finally, at 3.25 p.m. local time, the nuclear reaction became self-sustaining. Fermi and his group had successfully transformed scientific theory into technological reality. The world had entered the nuclear age. And the quiz question we have for you this week is, when was uranium discovered? And the answer to last week's question, the question was, which company offered the first commercial mobile service to retail users in India? Many of you got this right in the comment section. The answer is Modi Telstra's Mobile Net, which is a joint venture between the BK Modi Group and Australia's Telstra. That's all we have for you in this episode, but there's a lot happening on the renewable energy front in India, even if not with nuclear energy. The budget had quite a few announcements for rooftop solar. Wind, of course, has been trailing solar, but done well all by itself. So as we see developments, we'll keep you updated. Till we meet again, have a lovely time ahead.